reef or on wherever it is, on a wreck or on a, a pile on a bridge or whatever it might be, they don't want to swim away too much. So you've got to put the effort in and either wait for them to move off and they'll come to you or you try and find them and move to them. Okay? Um, the other thing is bait presentation for them is fairly important. They are um, pretty fussy. And a lot of people say when you hook a jewelry up, you should let it run, run, run. Don't forget about all that. So if you ever do that and you've lost fish, sorry, the reason being is because you shouldn't have done it. So has anyone ever done that before? You heard the rumor, let the jewelry go, 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 go. And then you think, oh no, will it go a bit longer? And you go strike and you miss it, right? They go boom, boom, and you go bang. That's how it works, okay? So try that next time. They go bite, bite. It's quite aggressive, bite, but really hard. And then the third one, they will gently pull on it or you pull on it. Okay, and you'll get them. How are you going, Dean? You made it, mate. Do you know your seat number, sir? Beautiful. We just started, mate. So you, you're in, in the bad boys down the back, mate. The late ones. <laughs> Thanks, Dean. Um, so um, we'll talk about that a bit later as well. So we'll start off. Okay. So Stewie does a lot of fishing in the seaway. So guys, when you're uh, fishing on the shoreline or fishing out of the boat inside in the calm water. Um, please take it here what Stewie does. Um, and you predominantly fish with live baits too? Yeah, live baits in the sea is definitely yeah. probably you catch more fish. Guys fishing plastics catch a lot of fish as well, but I just find live is definitely work a bit better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a bit easier. The, the problem is accessing live is right? So we all know how hard it is to get. Um, some days I've gone to seaway mm -hmm. with a bucket full of uh, herrings, that's all I can get. I can't get, I can't go ashore, it's too big a swell. Pike aren't biting, but Sue's going to talk about how to catch pike in a moment. Um, pike are a very good bait for, for jewies, okay? Um, but generally, um, as a last resort, you can either have some fillets, some mullet fillets, and tailor fillets are really good. So if you get too many tailors to see in one of your fishing trips, um, I'd suggest you fillet them and you salt them down, salt the flesh side of the fillet, hang it up somewhere outside the wife's not going to be mad at you, and let it drip the oil out for about probably a day like a all day in the sun and then cry back it or just wrap it in um in glad wrap and then freeze it and layer them in the freezer if you've got a bait freezer or somewhere that you'll let you use it um and it is such good bait like for jewies okay uh, but you because there's the days you just can't get get offshore to get bait or you can't get bait okay um, so Stewie, go. Sorry, mate. Yeah, so yeah. I think as Dougie said, the biggest thing is if you're going to live bait the seaway, obviously you've got to collect the bait somewhere, somehow. Um, we do troll and cast little lures a lot for pike, um, just generally around wave breaks. So you can do it in all weather. You don't have to go offshore and get yakkers or anything like that if it is cracking across or it's quite big swell. Um, and we just troll little hard bodies. So I generally use small, very small ones around, say, two inches long. And just um, sinking ones work better. Because if you get in hits, you can drop it back, you can cast a bit further, they troll a bit nicer. I'll cast it um, past these ones around. These are a little bit dearer, but they definitely work a lot better. Yeah, the Japanese ones, I'm not trying to upsell you, the Japanese ones work better for bike than yeah. the cheaper Chinese ones, okay? And most of the cheaper Chinese lures these days are nearly as dear as the Japanese ones. So um, they yeah. probably work at like $20 each sort of thing. Yeah. But easy to get bait. How do you fish them? Uh, so we tro we're trolling them over the top of weed beds, shallow water, around that sort of metre and a half or two metres sort of depth. Yeah. But these are so deep diving? Or shallow, shallow diving, but you're yeah. only in a water that's about that deep, Ross, so yeah. you can't get too deep to get too much weed on. Just in gear. So as slow as you can go. Yeah. The biggest thing is with all of these little lures that are going around, you need to really work your rod real hard, real fast. So you're basically, were you walking the fish underneath? Walking there to do it. Pretty much, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so I was jerking around, darting around heaps, yeah. and um, yeah, they'll just nail it. Yeah, use a little bit heavier leader when you're tying onto them, about 15 pounds, because pike have got very needly teeth, so you do lose a few lures if you use real light stuff. Yeah. I'm using light leader. Just a short bite. Yeah, just short. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so um, it's very hard, uh, very important to get your preparation right. So whether you're land based again or you're Sure, uh, boat base, you need to have some sort of live bait tank bucket of water with a uh, stone, or like an, an aerator, or some type of thing. Otherwise, your bait dies extremely quick. And if it does die, um, my suggestion would be to, to take out the backbone and butterfly it. They don't mind butterfly bait 
as, as probably the closest thing you're going to get to using live bait. Next scenario, if it dies, is to fill it and use the fillets. The fillets are good too. Okay, Taylor fillets fresh are really good for Jew. They love it. They love it more than mullet or anything. So, um, I keep going back to the Taylor, but Taylor's good bait, but yeah. they've got to be they've 35 be legal. centimetres legal. Yeah. Okay, yeah. really important. Um, so, Stu. I think the other thing is with like your bait tank, I got, to be honest, I just run it out of a bucket. I don't have a bait tank in the boat. It's a really good luxury if you do have one, but you've got to turn water over very frequently. So I just have a little, um, a smaller five litre bucket and I go a bucket in and a bucket out every five minutes. That's it. Yeah. yeah. If you're going to try to keep pike alive and you don't have a bait tank, they're even worse. You need a bucket that's quite long. As I've just got a rectangle one, they can't be bent. If they're bent, they die very quickly. And they need to be like, being able to move around a little bit. They just stack up. They probably need like a 20 litre bucket because they're quite long. Yeah. 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 Oh. Anyhow. Um, so, bait, we're going to get pike or we're going to get some herring on the bait jig. Um, if you're going to get your live bait and your land base, I suggest throwing around bridges or um, jetties or taking a cast net with you. Trouble is on the cast net where the, where the jew are is generally snaggy, so they don't want to wreck your cast net up, but try and find, work out where your spots are. Logistically, if you find, like a lot of spots I go to, are sandy areas to get my bait, like mullet and stuff like that, or a little dive for whiting. Problem is, it's a long way then to a spot and in the car. It's not the best thing for the live bait. They half of them die or they all die. So it's just a matter of trying to work at logistics first before you go and approach and catch your Jew that night. You've got to work all that out first. Okay. Um, next thing is um, your gear. So um, you have a range of hooks in your bag. I think you've got like 5Os, 7Os, 9Os and 8Os or something like that. So every size hook depends on the size of the bait, right? So if you're using a little herring, you're going to be using four rows. Even though the drew might be big, that's, it's got to match the hatch. Otherwise it becomes too obvious to the drew. Um, if they're aggressively hungry, they'll go to see it. doesn't really matter too much, but try and keep the hook small. Um, if you're going to use, say, a mullet that's about that big, I'd probably jump up to five O's, okay? If I was going to use a yakka or a slimy mackerel, I'd be using, I do use about eight O's. If I'm using a tailor or a decent mullet, I'd be using 9-0s or 10-0s. So it's all relevant. Um, if you're using squid, um, squid's different. Squid's one of those ones where how to hook it up without killing it, how to put it on my hook without eating it. <laughs> so I want to eat squid, right? <laughs> so, um, so my suggestion is, um, and from, from experience, whether it be Bill Fish or, or Jewies or whatever, Snapper or whatever, um, if you've got this little arrow squid, whatever it might be, um, you hook them with a circle hook. You haven't got circle hooks in your bag, but we, you've got circle hooks. Um, a small circle hook. 5 or 6 will catch a, a 40 kilo dewy, like a monster. And it needs to be small. Um, and the best part to hook a, a live squid, so this is its head here, and its tentacles, and its eyes here, and then it's got its body there like that, and, and the flaps along the side sort of thing. Um, the hardest part is in this region here. Okay, and all you do is you put the hook, I'll just change the colour for the hook. So you dig it sort of, you can put it right through if you want to, or you can just put it halfway through into the, the hollow part. So that's actually internal. And then just have the circle hook sticking out like that, and that's the eye there. So it's got to go in that, from the flap back to that corner, which is only about maybe 20 mil or, or one inch, say. That's the area you hook them up. And believe it or not, that little tiny hook at the end there that squeezes big, gets the fish, it never misses. Okay. Has anyone tried that yet? No. no. So you put it through the top or the side? Uh, you put it through the top, in the centre. Right. Yeah, good question. You put it into the squid. Into the squid, so into the chamber. Yeah, yeah go right through, but if you go to maybe a, a bit bigger size, like an 8 but I don't want these big hooks. Um, so I go into the chamber then back out. This does only through one part of the squid. Yeah. yeah. And the hook doesn't miss. Um, yeah, so give it a go. But if the squid's, squid's dead, I'm going to rig one up tonight to show you I run two hooks in the dead squid. I find if I put another hook up in here somewhere, they don't like it, they die too quick. They, they change colour and they die. Yes, yeah, they do, they die too quick. You want the squid to be pretty alive, you know. Um, 
And same with bait fish too, bait fish. Yeah. We'll show you how to rig up the bait. My bait's still defrosting, so <laughs> when it's defrosted, it's getting there. Um, we'll pass the hooks around, you can see how they sit in the bait. So I'll go back to Stewie. So Stewie, so we've yeah. got our baits, right? He's got the hook right size, leaders, what I size do you I think the biggest thing is as well, like when you're fishing the seaway, there's so many brim and little pickers and stuff like that. Live is definitely going to be the better option for you. Like if you use little herring, you catch a lot of brim and like, bycatch stuff and flesh baits are definitely like some days you just can't get past the broom you really need there to be a fair bit of tide and actually, kind of, actually they even annoy you on yakkers in yeah. the seaway the broom so yeah pike they yeah. rip the eyes out first and then they all the guts out and yeah mm. do it all but um yeah it's pretty it's hard like a bigger live is definitely better to kind of wean out all that bycatch stuff mm. yeah leader size too um i just use 40 or 60. yeah 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 when i'm in yeah. there so anything bait bigger than say um around probably 150 mil or six inches. Um, the, up to that, I'll be using 40 pound. Over that, say if you've got a 200 mil or eight inch mullet or whatever it might be, I'll be using 60. 60 seems to be the most popular size I use for Drew and most, most of our customers. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, sinker with a seal on top of your bait. You just fish this Yeah, bait. I fish a bit differently. I yeah. fish the sinker. Well, I fish the sinker in there on top of the bait. Oh, in the seaway though, because yeah. of the rocks. Yeah, because you, yeah. when you drift in, if you have it to a swivel, you see heaps of guys there with a big ball sinker and like a metre and a half or two metres, some of them, of trace to their bait, like rigged bait, you just get too many snags. The pike or the yakka swims around all the rocks and gets caught up. Whereas if you've got that big weight right on its nose, you know where it is all the time. <coughs> Can't swim away, you drift with it and it's heaps, mm. heaps yeah. better like for keeping gear on. Just want to talk about the seaway. How many guys here have fished the seaway for Jew or live bait on the wall or the pipe there? Yeah. How many guys want to do it? A few of you? Yeah, okay. So the biggest hassle you got is, is snags. It's like, it's like uh, heaven for us because you guys lose lots of gear and I do too when I'm fishing it. <laughs> but I put the other hat on. But, uh, but it is, uh, it's where the fish hold, right? And I think every stick that comes rolling down in floods from like, the rivers ends up in that hole because that's how bad it is when you drop your line down. Yeah. Um, so you, as Stuart said, you need to fish your, your line vertical. You can't actually cast it out. You must drop it straight out, straight down. And if it starts going out, you back the boat up onto it and drop it down, okay? Um, and you sort of just on the bottom, off the bottom, hope you don't get snagged up sort of feel. That's about yeah. what it is. Yeah. And, um, but if there's a jewy there, or you know, get Jack's obviously his bycatch and other stuff, but um, it'll be the same deal, boom, boom, bang. Yeah. yeah. The worst thing, I don't know how many of you guys have electric motors on the boat and all that, but the worst thing you can do there is spot lock. Mm. A, it stuffs everyone else's drift. It's very inconsiderate. I hate it. <laughs> but the other thing is you get, electric. <laughs> you get too many gear. Um, to, you lose too much gear. You're fishing out there. You don't know where you actually are. So if you can drift with it, like sure, use an electric to um, like adjust or whatever if you don't want to use your petrol motor, but it's going to be a lot easier if you drift with it. You could only use it probably on the low tide or high tide yeah. for that half hour window because it's going to be, as Stuart said, if you spot lock your line, it's going to go shunk in the current. The current's a bit, I don't know, four to six knots there, it rips. So current's a problem. Um, use bigger sinkers. So the most I'd use it in seaway is probably about a 10 ball, which is, I'll pass that around actually, that size. Seven balls a good what size. About jumping yeah, same deal. Exactly the same, mate. Yeah. Exactly the same amount of snags too, by the way. Yeah, so jumping bar is really good from, um, actually, I haven't caught much west side of um, Swan Bay entrance. It's predominantly from Swan Bay entrance to really the point right around the, yeah, sort of 300 metres east. That's the honey hole. Sometimes they're right yeah, up hard on the uh, jumping pin on the end of North Strati. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so oh, the stra North Strati side. So sometimes they're hard up against the bank and other times they're um, like 50 metres out in 45, 50 foot of water just sitting there in the current. Okay, I've got mates up there that fish. Has anyone fished jump in here? Does anyone show a hand? Yeah, okay, a few of you do. So I've got a mate there that sits there with um, lures like that type on a downrigger in the current. So he spot locks in the current and he drops the downrigger down and drops this back about 15 metres behind the downrigger and they just swim in the current and he smashes really big jewies, like real big. He's actually, a, um, Russell Gage does a inshore charters. Anyway, or Elliot, mm. <laughs> Elliot. Sorry, sorry Doug, are you, yes. saying, are you saying where, where Swan is? 
Uh, further into the uh, yeah, I'll draw it for you. Sorry, folks, just bear with us. We'll we'll get to everyone and everyone's what they want to do. Um, but just at the uh, so this is Kalinga Bank comes around, and that's sort of like the entrance. The entrance is ever changing. It's actually up here somewhere now, but in the Swan Bay, um, and then North Strati is sort of like this, and it's got a big bend like that. And the point comes out, and then it goes up the beach, right? And that shallow bank sort of along here and there's a drop off there it just drops down like 20 then 40 feet all the way along here and this is sand as well comes in here a bit closer um, and all the stags all the sticks and timber are all through here and all the way through here so you get lots of um lots of snags but that's where the jewies are at time so you're talking like about um, from here the back wall up the beat up the bank where it just drops straight down Sometimes they're right along that edge, and we caught quite a few on there. But most of the time, and this, and that, the end of um, that, well, this is the end of South South Stratty. Sorry, running out of ink. And the South Stratty sort of here. You've got the lagoon. Now they've got this, the um, the new sort of lagoon that goes in like this sort of thing. Um, and then that's broken waves here. Uh, do you all know what I'm talking about there now, sort of thing? Yeah. So it's changed like that now, right? This goes. Well, it's probably not like that. It's probably more like that, sorry. Um, so the waves break over here at high tide and they roll up against here. Um, this point here actually is sandy out here and it break out here as well. Um, but through the channel here, which is probably from the broken waves here to there, it's only around about probably 100 metres, I'd dare say, if that. It's getting narrower. Um, but the jewies sit a lot of time just in this, in this area here in around about... 40 to around 50 feet it is, roughly speaking. They just sit out in the middle there, in the current. Probably obviously wait for something to swim past. But they'll be skilled up. You'll get more than one, you'll get two or three hits. Um, and this ledge out here that sort of goes along like this, that ledge just in that area there is really good too. I don't think they get the stuff coming out of Swan Bay here, because this is, this is a protected area here, you can't fish in here. Um, but there's a lot of bait comes out of here and sits over on this area here. So we get big flatties here, obviously, as well. Oh, that's a good area. But sometimes they're along here, and sometimes they're, you've got to come out 20 metres or, or another 30 metres out. Okay? You just drift that too, right? Yeah, drifting that as well. Same deal. Yeah, same deal. Um, and drift it vertically. Um, I will talk about vibing, right? That's really good too. Yeah. Um, okay, so Stewie on the, on the north wall. Just keep up with the line, yeah. yeah. I generally just use the petrol motor, to be honest. I just got the tiller, so I just always back up to it. To, to be, to be honest, you fish out the back corner. When the yeah. current's ripping, it's really hard. Even not, like if you've got an 80 pound motor, you, uh, electric motor, you may be able to hold yourself in the current, but most of the time, I'll, I'll just drop out. Because it's too hard for the, for the motors, unless you've got super batteries, I don't know. Lithium may be a bit more power. Yeah. So the seaway wall, I'll just quickly draw this up for real quick. Um, so this is the set, uh, the north wall, sorry, and south wall. And wave breaks over here, so sort of thing. We'll just imagine, it, we'll shorten this up a little bit. <laughs> north wall and south wall, the wave break. And that yellow beacon's in the middle here. And the seaway tower's here, and the pipe goes across about here somewhere and you've got a sign here and a sign here. Okay, so um, with the seaway, it has a few holes in it. So most, I would dare think most of you by the land um, fishers, um, and we'll draw where to get them off the rock wall too here guys as well, if you're land based. But if you own a boat, um, the best places to catch the Jew are by far the number one on the history we fish, but would be in this sort of area here, and actually even out a bit further, but is that sort of area? Yeah, like? pretty much, yeah. yeah. And then the other area, I find the north side of the seaway, there's a, um, a green here, another green here, and another green down here. Ah, uh, no, there's not, no, that's it, that's that way down there, yeah. So um, this area here on sort of a bit over halfway is really good for jewies on the pipe. 
And if you drift between the green on the run out tide, sort of between a bit to the south of the green and down to around about that area there, that's a really good run. Okay. Um, the best time for dewies, I believe, in the seaway daytime is on the last hour or two hours of the run out. I don't know if you're used to. Yeah, yeah, I definitely like that last run out, first of run yeah. in. Yeah. Most guys try to fish the high tide, right? You probably, most of you probably would. That's just not the best time. It's a good time at night time, the last hour of the run in. Uh, but daytime uh, lasts the run out better. doesn't matter if it's 10 o'clock in the morning. For, we can get it obviously at 6 or 4 in the, after, six in the morning, 4 in the afternoon or 5 in the afternoon. That's a really good time. Okay. Um, but that's the area you fish. But you've got to remember, it gets a little bit rough across here, right? You get a lot of a lot of pressure waves and turbulence, and if it's blowing northeast, it's really ugly. Southeast is not too bad, um, but the swell at the moment, the way the the way the bar is, it's sort of breaking out across the front, across this area here, on an angle like that. So you're sort of protected there, but it does stand up there. Okay. Don't know if I go there Saturday morning. Maybe not. <laughs> Would you fish there Saturday morning? Last run out. No, uh, no, no. Um, now there's a couple of other holes for those of you that are land based. Has anyone fished the south wall for Jewies yet, or caught one off the south wall? Any luck here, guys? Had some big stuff on, but I haven't got anything. Haven't got anything yet. The problem is the seaway wall is under the water, and you probably know this, but um, the rocks come out like. It's like a second shelf. A second shelf, yeah. And it's under the water like that sort of thing, right? And that's about probably, um, I don't know, from here the back wall or maybe about that. So you've got the rocks come down and then there's a little bit you can see in the water, then it goes down again, but then it goes rocks again. So if you're drifting, you're caught in those rocks all the time. Same in the north wall. It has, like it comes around, Right around, this is that terrible penny. <laughs> Sorry, guys. We've got almost good penny somewhere. Okay, that's it. So it comes around like that as well. So it's on that edge that you get the fish. The problem is you've got to get them over the edge if you're land based. So that's the problem where you lose them off the, off the rocks, maybe about 15 metres out, guys. Yeah. yeah, around about on that ledge. And th there's a couple of really good holes. So if you know where the rock wall, uh, the rocks used to be up here and used to walk through the middle of the rocks, I think there's actually like a little sit down station there now. Yeah, so there's actually a hole, that's a tower right here, right? There's a hole just here and it's actually nearly 60 foot deep. So that's where, if you're boat fishing, not many people know about it. Uh, we fish that area a lot and we get dewies there. It actually comes out to about here actually, it comes out a fair way. Um, and if you're shore based, it comes right into the edge there, really close. And uh, that's where I'd be fishing more than out the end here if I was chasing dewies. And you'll get dewies um, at night time chasing the squid and the mullet in May, which is one of the reason I did the seminar now, um, all the way pretty well from here around to here, around to where the uh, red is around here. There's another red over here, obviously. Um, and they'll be chasing the dew all the way along here. The dolphins will as well, but you'll hit the dewies are different to dolphins. Dolphins, you hear the noise when they spit out, or they blow their out. Dewies, you just hear the crunching sound when they're chasing the bait. But that's a really good spot. Okay, so if you're land based, give that a crack. Um, I've never caught a fish there on lures ever, guys, as in dew, that is. Okay. So, Dewey, do you want to add anything to that at all? No, I don't think so. I think, yeah, but, I definitely but, try, do drift this if you've got a boat. And as Dougie said, the biggest thing is it's where the rocks meet the sand. It's definitely um, where they patrol along. Mm. They don't just sit over the top of the rocks and they don't just sit in the middle of nowhere. Mm. They're around structure. Yeah, so you see Ian Banks' photos, the, the diver guy. Does anyone follow him at all? If you don't, you should. Is on Facebook. Us about on, online? Yeah. Like yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, as, does anyone follow Ian at all? Yeah. It's a great... Great, we're all a bit green as well, so we say we're falling for the good side of things, but also checking out the fish. But um, uh, he's always diving the seaway pipe, and the other day, I don't know if you, there was there was literally 50 or 100 Jew in the school, 
and they're just doing their normal little circles round and round. And I'm guessing he was in this vicinity here somewhere because um, that pipe's quite, it's probably about the size of this table um, and it's sort of unearthed in most of the spots but some places are pretty close to the bottom, other areas it's quite high and unearthed a fairly bit underneath with rocks and stuff and they just seem to go around in circles in that area. But there's a couple of gentlemen that fish on the run in tide out of boats, getting back to the boat side now, and they'll anchor up about 20 or 30 metres away from that pipe in that raging current. I put a reef anchor out, obviously. And they use really big sinkers and they use like the sliding system, um, which is, we've got them downstairs, they're like a little, a little, um, it's like a little plastic slider with yeah, a clip on it. That's right, it's like a little thing like this. And your line goes through the centre and it has a clip on it, like a safety pin type thing. Yeah, like, yeah. like that sort of thing, like a safety pin. And you put the snapper lead on there. So they're fishing with a pound snapper lead. But the live bait pulls through it just like, like a ball sinker. Okay? So it enables them to fish uh, in that raging current with a big sinker. But fishing it like a normal type sinker. So they'll sit there. Their line probably hits the bottom somewhere around here. And their bait's sitting back around, the, around where the jewies are. In the thing there. The only problem is you're sitting in the middle of the seaway. So it's not a great thing to do on a Saturday or Sunday, <laughs> but definitely a good thing to do yeah, during the week. It doesn't stop people. Yeah. yeah, no, it doesn't stop people, that's right. Um, and at night time, we've actually sat back here and done the same thing, fishing back that way at night time on the run out tide. It's pretty safe where you are there. You just got to make sure your anchor doesn't drag. Okay? And don't fall asleep. Um, but yeah, so. Land base, that's the best area, I believe. Or if you can find them chasing bait along here. Um, look, there are some guys that throw lures in at night time when they hear the dew crashing. Um, and they're generally a big soft plastic in this sort of vicinity, which we'll talk about down south at the moment. Um, that type of thing, quite big. Um, or they'll throw a big lure out, like that one I showed before, something like that type of thing. Quite big. Shallow diving, big loud rattle, and uh, makes a lot of noise. Um, and throw it into the, the fish that are moving around on the surface, crashing the bait. And they'll crash the, the mullet right up into the shallow under the rocks, and they'll be right there in the rocks too. Don't know if they hit a lure that close, but have one rigged up anyhow. Um, if you want to have another crack at the Jew out of a boat again on the seaway, um, this area here we've done really well as well. So there's a Jack Green's actually over here somewhere, closer to, the, to here. Um, and on the wave break island, like that, you get an eddy on the run out tide that's, that's in this area here. Same place where they dive a lot. You see the dive boats there. And that's also the Drew place. And it also holds a lot of yakkers. So it may be worth a go with the bait jig there for yakkers if you can't get offshore. How deep is the hole It's about 40 feet, 30, 40 feet, at, towards the, the little floating yeah, boy here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No and actually... Well, we took them to Barnum and I just thought yeah, they were around. I thought they were just sort of training. Them. Oh, know. they are. They do diving there, but there's a lot of fish down there too. Yeah. But there's a lot of bait there. And there's actually quite a few people get there and just rape the bait, <laughs> catch the bait to eat, obviously. But there's um, sometimes slimies there as well, but generally yakkers. Okay. And there's another hole on the other side just here that's 60 foot deep. And not many people know about that either. It's just on that side there, over there. How far off that? Lots of bait in there too, yeah. How far off that wall is that hole in the That one there? Yeah. About 30 metres, 40 metres to the exact north slash northeast a tiny bit. Yeah. So that also holds Jewies on the, you've only got like that hour wind down the tide. It doesn't work that well, and it, run, it runs too hard there. Yeah, it probably runs harder there than over here, believe it or not. Um, uh, high tide, first hour of the run out, last the run in, or the bottom in the first of the run in would be good too. Um, this spot here is uh, high tide and the first to run out, or two hours of run out. You can see it all night in that eddy, there's no current. So fish really small sinkers. I'd fish a, um, probably a bait on a float with a light on it at, at night time. And I'd also fish um, on the bottom as well. But you get big shovel nose there too. You get, you, but once it gets daylight, you catch kings, you catch a lot of different big flatties, yeah. everything. But you've got to get out, full of divers get there, they don't like it. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, 
I think that's probably about it on the seaway. You know, we caught two down here. I caught two drifting down through the middle here. You catch them everywhere, but they're the main areas of the seaway. And that's going to be the main areas that you guys are going to fish, I think. Okay. Um, for those of you who are land-based and want to catch one off the river sort of thing, I'd probably suggest maybe... Um, there's a few places you could try. I haven't fished them for a few years, but we used to get them... Um, we get, I used to live on the Coon River, actually, near the bridge years ago. First Street runs east on the north side. Um, and we always used to catch dew, but they're not big. They're only like maybe a metre, a, mac, a really big one. Predominantly, they're about 60 centimetres to about 80, maybe, if you're lucky. So they're small dew, um, but under the bridge is fine. North, north side of the bridge, not the south side. Um, you also get them down around the um, boat works, but you can't fish there off the, off the shore, can you? Mm, not really, no. Nah. Not hard? Nah. Well, Gold Coast City Marina, sorry. Has anyone fished the Gold Coast City Marina for Jewies at all? Actually a good spot it. as well. I've watched it from under the lights of the boat. Yeah, yeah. Come up, come up. yeah, that's plenty there, eh? heaps there. Um, and the other area if you're land based would be, um, I don't know how far you can get down under the house at, you know, at Santa Barbara where you are the, walking up the point yeah, from the boat ramp. Can you get up there a little bit or not really? Not the people really. don't like it. No. There's a couple of houses there. Depends <laughs> how close you can get to the houses, they don't ring the cots. But, um, it, it's rocky there and it's a deep hole there and there's Jew there and there's, there's a uh, Jack's and Trevally there too. Who's that? Uh, at the boat ramp at Santa Barbara, which is a Hope Island, near where you are, Ross, um, but on the Coomer River side. Okay. Yeah, and you just park at the boat ramp there. Well, don't, park, don't park at the boat ramp, they'll give you a ticket, park in the car park. No, <laughs> and then they'll walk up. Oh, the boat's fine, you yeah. can fish the boat there, no problems at all. But it's a good hole there too, guys. For Jewies. Okay. Um, Logan River's really good too. Um, I see someone posted today, I can't remember the gentleman's name. He fished up there once in last night. They got like nine Jewies up to a metre, you know, they did really well. Um, Sweet question, though. Yes. Uh, being a non Australian and just learning, what did Jewies taste like? Really good. Okay. So really good. No, that's okay. <laughs> that's right. I'm going to talk about the, the worm factor in a moment. So, has anyone had Jew and, and got worms in the Jew? At all. A few of you have, maybe Graham has. Um, it's, it's not a common thing. It is in trade Jew, but not so much silver Jew or Mulloway. Um, but when you do get them, it's generally a lot in the river. You get them in the river. Um, the ocean ones are pretty clean. Um, you get the odd one, but it's generally if you're fishing in the river for some reason, I don't know what they're feeding on to give them that parasite. The worms don't do anything bad to you. You can cook them up if you want, to, or you can cut them out if you want. It's up to you guys. But I definitely would cut they the section get out. Into the flesh. They get into the yeah. flesh and they're normally in the... Jump them straight away when you catch them, I've heard. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, they're still there, they're embedded in the flesh. They're yeah. like a um, like a, a, a little hump on the head. We can't see it, it's just like a bulb with a, with a, like a spaghetti end on it. Yeah, right. yeah. and they're normally in the gut area or on the rib cage, above the rib cage. Up yeah, on they're the on top. that bottom Shoulder. half. Shoulder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So if you cook the fish, it doesn't matter. It's got that protein. Nah, sweet. Protein. No sashimi. No sashimi, no. Unless you like it wriggling in your mouth. No, they don't wriggle. They're actually, they're like rigid in there. I've never seen one move ever. Even when I feel them, they just sit there. I don't know what the deal is, but yeah. Anyhow, don't worry about the worms. It's all good. Eating quality is fantastic. You say the good thing, but you're probably wrong. Well, I'm being honest. It's the same as we call a cob. Cob, that's right. Mate, they're good eating, aren't they, Ross? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, like, we only get really big ones. I've never seen Yeah, well, I'm just going to get quick. So, is there any questions on the seaway side of the guys at all? What do they look like on the sounder on the seaway? Uh, they are just like little, little tiny. It depends on your sounder brand. But generally, it's arches. My compass arches stacked up too. Yeah, but the trouble is with seaway, you get a lot of um, bait and other fish that all look the same too. Yeah. On, on, on that note, is there a lot of it? Do a lot of them hang around together, or is it just? They the ha a lot hang around together. Yeah. Yeah. They school up. The small school might be half a dozen or ten, but generally I think it'd be like twenty to forty. And when we're offshore fishing, 
And when uh, they're on, they're on. You, you when they're on, they're on. Yeah. That's it, yeah. Especially offshore. Yeah. Yeah. Any, uh, any like vibing? Yeah, so vibing and seaway actually, Stewie. Yeah, vibes uh, work really good yeah. as well, but you just lose a few. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The problem with vibes is the hooks are on the bottom, right? When you drop it down, you got to lift it up, it gets caught in the kanji. Yeah. And uh, kanji is that sort of soft, uh, it's a live type sponge that grows on rocks and it loves hooks. Yeah. Okay, so we help plant the kanji. <laughs> but no, it's, it's, um, it is a problem, but hopefully the fish are on, they bite it before it gets down. So normally on, on when you use it vibes, the first lift you do, if they're on, they'll hit it when you, it does the first drop down. It's like, boom, and then bang. That's how it is. Same with vibes, if they're out too far on the back, you need to back up. You can't afford to have it dragging anywhere near the bottom. It's got to be vertical, and then fishing it vertical. Do you sound around and look for the schools before you drop? Nah, I, I sound around and look for where that rock's meant to stand. Mm. Just fish that edge. 47 to 52 feet is my favourite depth. Um, let's see where there. What's your favourite strip? Mine's about 52. Oh, mine's about 50 to 58. 50 58, yeah. okay, so you're just down a little bit further. Yeah. Mm. So you just sort of get your, so your little line up and you keep going. Vertical. Vertical jigging. Yeah, very slow yeah. one. Yeah, the biggest thing is as well, for their size, they're not very heavy. So you need to do it really on a tide change, or very close to it. It's hard to fish like mid-tide. Yeah, so that line. 10 ball going around before that, I yeah. think that's about nine, uh, uh, 92 grams or 108 grams, something like that. Um, where the, that, the biggest vibe here, I think, is about 42. 50. Oh, 50 grams, yeah, but it's also got more body. volume yeah. <laughs> body so it's going to get more um, time in the air in the water yeah just on live bait you see a lot of live garfish yeah live garfish mate they, they love garfish too um, I spoke to a guy um, he's a real good beach fisherman a couple of weeks ago before the wind and he said the garfish that were around the pump and jerry were just off the Richter scale and there was he doesn't know a Jew or mackerel it was night time or dolphin he didn't say the dolphins that weren't making the dolphin noise but they were just hoeing into the garfish, they were just showering out. And he actually came in from offshore and saw the commotion. It must have been one of those still nights we had a few weeks ago. And um, he put the spotty on, they were, they were all just guarded, showering out, and something was into them. So he had a good bait. Yep. Um, Gary's another one of those fish that die really quick. They're like herring, they just go stiff. And uh, so it's hard to keep them alive. So you've more or less got to catch one, put it straight out. Yep. And when you are getting live bait guys and you're on the spot, my suggestion is you get that first one that comes on board and if your mates fish or whose it is, you grab it off him and you put it on hey. and straight back out. You have to do that. Because half the time we've done that. Is there a trick to keep them alive or they can't keep them alive? Or Garfish, no, no trick. No, they die. No, they're... I mean, for the second year, you've got a good live well tank. That garfish will die. No. Yeah, they'll... they'll and it, you yeah, just those, gotta try not to yeah. touch them. Yeah. yeah. Same with the pike. Like I just grab the lure and rattle them off. Yeah. Don't even touch them. Yeah. Even if you use them with the live bait net or whatnot, just grab the outside of the net because the scales just come off them. So mm. yeah. yeah. mm. So how would you hook them up? Yeah. So, you know, if you want to put them on as live, or is yeah, garfish. Fun? Garfish one of those. They got that really hard beak. So um, I just hook it through the top part so you can still you move his mouth. Yeah. Oh yeah. Like yeah. oh yeah, 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 okay. It comes up straight away, you point oh. the hook and you just throw it back right out and hopefully it lost long enough. Hopefully he's, yes, that's exactly right. He's yeah, in well, his well. he's in his domain, hopefully he comes back to life if he's happy again for sort of <laughs> something. <laughs> With the hook up his backside, but yeah. yeah. Um so any other questions on the seaway guys or anything like that? Just the same with yeah. plastics as well. So oh, plastics are really good too, yeah. So sorry I didn't do that. Um my go to, something like that type of thing with a big paddle tail on it. Um, curl tails are not too bad. They do like um, like uh, gold, eight inch gulps are really good. The grub, a really good one for jewies and like the jumping pin area for those who fish jumping pin. Um, that's one of our go tos. We're using it on about an ounce seven oh, which I think you get in the bag too. They're really good. Um, and vertical jigging it. You just lift it up maybe about three meters and drop it back down again. Exactly the same way. Exactly the same way. And actually, bycatch for flatted, you catch them Jew, and then you catch them Jew, you catch them flatted as bycatch. Yeah, yeah either way. Um, um, do, they, do they seem to prefer natural gullets if we're. Yeah, oh, no, I've caught a lot on the fluoro greens for my really good favourite colour, especially on the, that lime green, eight inch gulp grub's really good. 
Um, but white's probably our biggest yeah, seller. Like white or natural. Yeah. yeah. Me, yes, sorry. Is there an uh, offer always better even if you go to fish maybe in Frida River? Yeah, so exactly right, mate. So if you do the same technique, the problem is you don't have a boat to realise where the hole is along the rock wall, right? So um, I'm always looking when I see the, like um, any of the rock walls where I fish, I always go for a walk out and check it out. And wherever I see a lot of sand or that sort of thing, I know it's not super deep, right? And when I see um, normally big swirls or um, clearer water, it's generally deeper. If that's any help to you when you along the edge of the rock wall, because some of the rock walls, especially Brunswick, it gets like nearly a sandbar in it at times and then it disappears again, you know? So um, it's a matter of trying to see the depth and that's the area you're going to fish. You have a boat, you sound along it and you see the hole and then you know if you're going to fish off the rock, that's where I'm going to fish. Yeah, that's like that spot I was saying before, that's 60 foot deep. But I used the sounder to find that first, <laughs> not visually. But, um, but if you're going to go down um, Iluka or Yamba way, guys, um, Iluka is actually, I like that side better than Yamba side. Um, or if you're going to fish uh, further down Southwest Rocks or any of those areas down there, it's exactly the same, actually, the easier to catch those. It's like the further south you go, the more jewfish there are. And the easier to catch. Has anyone fished down that way at all yet? Yes. And how'd you go? Well, I haven't chased them yet. haven't chased them yet, mate? Yeah. I've seen them, seen them yeah. Chasing, yeah. They're, they're not scared. They're open. They're big. Yeah, and they're big. That's right. Big. Yeah, that's right. And oh, it's easy. Oh, so uh, Yam is about three hours south by car, four, three and a half hours by car. So 200k south. Yeah. Yeah, fair way south. Ballon is not too bad as well, but Ballon the wall's not the friendliest wall to fish off. Uh, some walls are made nice for fishermen and some walls are made terrible. The rocks are all yeah, on that angle. Ah, like, uh, no, you'd be better off getting it from you. Really yeah, I'll talk about that in a moment. Yeah. Um, so, if you do get it down that way and you want to, I definitely recommend, as I said before, that off the seaway, don't even probably waste your time with lures. But when you go down that way, it's nearly don't waste your time with live bait and cast lures. Okay, it's a reverse. And you've got to you got to trust me that one because it's how it works down there. Not many guys fish with bait down there. They, they all cast lures. And they cast, um, these, like this thing here is really popular. I pass this around, so shad wrap. That colour, that one, is really popular with Jew fishermen. We sell, when guys come up and down south, they'll buy like half a dozen that one at a time. We carry like 12 on the shelf all the time. Um, there is a new version of it, which I haven't tried yet, so I can't say how good it is. That fellow there will pass it around too. And this is the one you may use out here, but definitely works down south too. Um, the other thing you do down south is you cast big plastic. So um, this is a Z-Man, this fellow here. That's about the size you've got to use, guys. Okay, so that's about a, I think it's seven inch. A mag size in here. But it's a big one and um, running about that same hook as you got 7.0 one ounce jig head, okay? Um, you're casting it out, why do you use such a big jig head? You don't, you don't do it down the bottom, you want to actually swim it about within about a metre of the surface. It's because you're sort of winding, slow winding, you stop and let it fall, and then start, start winding and bring it back up again. And that's the action all the way back to you. Okay, use steady the, winding. Use the um, No, just a jig head. You can put a sis hook in, I guess, but they'll just, they'd, the mouth of the like a 20 kilo drew, the mouth's about the size of a bucket. What is this? Is it like that, a stinger? Yeah, like a yeah. stinger. Yeah, correct. Um, but you don't need it, no. They'll, they'll just, they'll they always go for the head, do they? Always go for the head, yeah. yeah. Most of the time. Um, so the smallest I'd use would probably be something in that vicinity, that type of thing there. I'll pass these around here as well. Thanks, Drew. But the ones you've got in your bag will suffice, they'll, they'll definitely work. Another thing too, um, when you get down south, it's a different thing up here. So, I, you know, because a lot of our customers that chase Jew, they go south. They, they pack up the weekend, they go down that way. Because they're chasing Jew, they want to get a big one, and they get lots. And there's a lot of prawns that run down there in the rivers, and the prawns, we get up here, they're up like up in the bay, or 
they're in the deep holes and they're not where the dew is and that are so much. Um, but down south, they have dew, oh, they have prawns where the rock walls come into the inside of the, of the seaway or the bar and they all use a torch and they scoop them up. They're all prawns like this type of thing, that size. And the Jews love the prawns down there too. So when you've got the opportunity to not use much weight and the tide's slack, um, I'd definitely be, maybe give a prawn type of crack, you know? Like that type of thing. Because they're around the rock walls and they feed them. Ah, it, it'd probably work in the seaway maybe. Yeah, seaway might, but I'd but, probably fish other one. Or yeah. bait. Yeah. yeah, all the vibe. Yeah. It's a little bit different. I don't know why, but this is the way it is. Yeah. How about the moon? Ah, uh, yeah, moon. So, um, like, it, in theory, everyone says fish the full moon on the high tide for jewies. It's probably right, and it's when they're fairly active and the bait's fairly active too. Um, but I think they follow the mullet that come in is more important than the moon. If the mullet come in on the whatever tide it may be and whatever moon phase it may be, they're there too. So you need to know about the bait more than the currents or tides or moons and then try and work with it on the tide, on those other things, okay? You need to have the bait. All fish, all fish are the same. Bait holds fish, simple as that. And the bait's not there, sometimes I don't want to know about anything. Or they're not there. Yeah. So, but if I was going to say, I'm going to go out Daytime fishing, um, like Stewie said, and I said, it's got to be low tide, preferably the afternoon or, or in the morning. And that's when I'm going to fish the seaway or fish wherever. If I was going to go night time in the seaway, um, I could, it moons because you can see easier. <laughs> you can see everything, you know. Um, and your land base especially, because those rocks are dangerous. Um, so I'd probably say, um, give the moon a crack. The trouble is the tides are so big at night, they run so hard. So you've got to put up with that, but the fish will be there, probably, yeah. Traditionally, the full moon of May was in June, and the other two uh, due type, well, and July's not too bad too, yeah. Um, beach fishing for, for, how many of you guys beach fish here when you catch a jew off the beach, or surf? The surf fishing is really good. How many people are surf fish, actually? I asked that question, probably first. So quite a few of you do. So, um, giving the Jew a crack off the beach is quite good. You do catch them, on, I caught quite a few of the years on pillies as bycatch. Not intentionally fish for tailor, but I catch Jew, but they've never been really big. Maybe maybe a metre. Um, that's probably at Fraser, probably. Um, but um, if you want to catch one, the two things you've got to put up with is sharks. Sharks love Jew baits, okay? And lots of sharks around these days, we all know. Um, and the other problem is trying to keep your bait position in one area, not moving too much. You don't want to move too much. Like a pillie you throw out, throw it up into the current, comes along, gets to there, you wind it back in, you throw it back out again. If you do that with a dew bait, live bait, if you've got liveies, it's going to kill it by the second cast out. Because imagine getting thrown at 100 metres and whacking them to the ground. It's not good. Whacking the other surf, sorry, the water. Second cast, his head's knocked out. So you need to hold it in that position. So you need to use like a star sinker setup or, a, or a, uh, like a Victorian style with a Paternoster style. And your live bait's hanging off a three-way swivel. So complete opposite way to what we normally fish. What about the slider one? Yeah, slider's good too, mate. That one's good too. And put a, a half-pound lead on it and belt it out on the edge. Obviously, if you've got a back bank that's close, so you just want to fish the gutter, you know. Sometimes they're just behind the surf break too. Um, but yeah, that's the way to do it. But the best way, it's hard to get live bait. Unless you've got a tail of that, you caught that you can rig up so it looks like you just caught it and put it out. <laughs> Small one I'm talking about. <laughs> you can hear that? Uh, uh, or um, if it's a bigger one, <laughs> can't. <laughs> if it's a bigger one, um, with normal size 35 centimetres, um, my suggestion would be um, to rig it up with a double hook rig, which will show you on when that bait's snowed frosted, how you, how you rig up a live tailor. So live tail is really good. But my best catches have been guys just on tailor fillets. So tailor fillet, two hooks, one in the back, one in the, in the up towards the front. Pull it reverse way around. So you pull it from the tail end facing the rod, facing you, and the wide end at the bottom. Does that make sense? Yeah. And, uh, and just belt it out same, same way, mate. Big sinker. You're going to get broom and stuff, pack it, but any big jewelry is going to come and just inhale it. Yeah. 
So just try tailor fill, it's a really good. And do you have like a swivel to a leader there? Um, yeah, so that um, slide rig, you probably want to have a, an upper on it maybe, or you can put a, you could put a, um, a uh, you know like the beads we use on a float stopper bead, the large size, and, a, and just a Lumo bead or something like that. And that you can actually position wherever you want, and that's as far as the line as you can take out before it stops. Okay. Or two swivels. Or two swivels, yeah. 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 But um, yeah, so surf, the contention is um, is trying to hold it and sharks. A lot of big shovel nose, too. Yeah. But a lot of jewies. A lot of jewies live in the surf. Yeah, especially around bar areas. So obviously rock walls again, but where you've got no rock wall, Fish at the bar at the, the sandy spit side. I think, um, by memory, Southwest Rocks on the north side is very good fishing for um, Jew. But I think it's a green zone now. But I think they changed it. That's a really good spot. Did well there one time, many, many years ago. Okay, um, so any questions on that at all, folks? Okay, all good. Okay, so is there any questions? I know land bases, the hardest part of land base, guys, you need to find someone with a boat. <laughs> it's a, and I'm talking about the ones not beach fishing, just the ones estuary river fishing, um, because it's hard to get spots. All the good spots have got houses on them, or or you just can't get to them, you know, golf course or something like that. So um, my suggestion would be um, to learn to fish the rock wall or the surf, or if you want to get jewies, like as in get a good one or a, good, a few more than one little one. Um, or get someone has got a mate, me and a mate's got a boat. Okay. Simple as that. You don't need a little tinny. Sweetie. Yep. Okay. Um, any more questions on inshore? I think that's about it. Inshore, Stuart? That's about it. Mate. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. Um, okay, we'll go, we'll go offshore. Because um, we'll get into it. So, offshore, um, a lot easier. A lot, lot easier. And there's not much to know about it, but get out there and know where the spots are. So, I don't have a sheet for the inshore guys, sorry. <laughs> but I do have a sheet for the offshore guys. Um, these are all marks I pulled out of my GPS um, from north of Jumping Pin, just north of Jumping Pin, as around the Dragon sort of area. Uh, Sully's is a really good area, Sully's Reef, uh, down the Cotton Reefs, and then all the, the blocks. The blocks is my favourite spot, guys, okay? I'm being open with you. Uh, they're about five k's northeast. Yeah, about oh, maybe seven k northeast. Yeah. yeah. About twenty-three meters or twenty-five meters sort of there. Yeah. Yep. So the blocks, if you just want to know in your head where it is, it's um, the one that says. Um, Yeah, yeah, it is. It's okay. Got it right. Okay, it's the ones that say um, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight down. So twenty-seven fifty-two, three forty-nine. That one. Yeah. And then the next one. So one, two, three, four, five down. Oh, sorry. No, next four down. Sorry. No, five down. Five down. So five, including that one. All the ones that end on the other side, 153.27, they're all the blocks. Or well, there's actually heaps of blocks there, but they're the main blocks. So I call those Big Dewey, I think called Dewey, Big Dewey, Mother Big Dewey, or Big Mother Dewey's. And, um, and then I just, uh, yeah, Stewie's, <laughs> Stewie's Dewey. <laughs> That's the little ones, you catch the little ones there. Sorry, Stewie. <laughs> skinny ones, mate. <laughs> yeah, they're artificial, so they're actually, um, I, I don't really know. I haven't dived it, so I don't really know what it's like, but I do know they're hollow and or they're sort of like cone, like uh, cone shapes, I think. Not cone shape, um, concaves. Yeah, concaves. That's the word. Thank you. And um, and they're about the size of a bus. Yeah, it's really big. Yeah. And um, the the Jewies know exactly when you hook them up. You've got that's why I use that type of rod to pull them out. Um, but I, we do use light stuff too. Daytime, to not go. so much nighttime, daytime. You tend to get bigger ones at night. And, and when they're on the bite out in most of these areas here, um, half these areas are daytime, half these areas are nighttime spots. That's up to you guys to work that out. But 
Um, when you're fishing uh, night time for two, if those of you who haven't done it, how it works is you get your live bait, you head about four o'clock in the afternoon, spend an hour getting your live bait, it goes dark down about five, quarter past five. Um, you want to be there with your line of water on one of those marks at like five. And then you're just sitting there and talking to your mates, nothing happening, nothing happening. And it might be slow drifting, you might be anchored, you might be spot locked, whichever it may be. Uh, most of those blocks, some, some of the better ones, some of those ones you got there, may have four boats in the size of this shop nearly, okay? Like, generally mates in other boats too, because otherwise if you sort of come in, they might get a bit cranky at you. Um, but, so the secret is to get off work early first, that's the secret, okay? <laughs> and then um, you sit there and then the sun will just go behind the mountains behind Stratty, and then at that first uh, hint of darkness, it'll be like, what light is goes like that, and next week you'll feel boom, boom, bang, and that's on, you're on. And then actually mate's on, and then he's on, if you've got three in the boat. And it's like that sometimes, you get, you, we bagged out in like 20 minutes with three of on board, six, six dewies over a metre 20, you know. Like just crazy. And um, what do we do now? And other times we've been out there and we've um, you know, been waiting and waiting and, and as soon as it goes dark or the moon's risen on the other side, I'll come up just on the breaking and next week I'll come on the bite, that time might be 6.30. And they'll just come on. And when they come on, it's just like bang, bang, bang again. And once they're on, it's very, very easy to bag it very, very quickly. And the trouble with Jewies is they don't, because you're getting up a bit to get them off the bottom, or sharks, which have to get a few heads back. The problem is they, 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 they their bellies, I don't know, they do they expand or whatever, they don't release too well. So you don't ever get them undersized, I can tell you that now. You never get them under, you rarely get them under a metre. So they're always big in most sea spots here. So uh, my suggestion is when you don't, Keep fishing after you get your bag limit because you, you can't really release them. So go do something else. Yeah. What is the limit on? Two per person at the moment, yeah. But two big jewies is, is plenty. Yeah. Um, and there's no boat limit. There's no boat limit yet, no, not yet. But jewies I think are fairly they're one of the probably bottom fish that grow fast, I think. Yeah. And they and they multiple ply in, in lots. So um, you know, if you knew how many Jew got destroyed in uh, cast nets and and beam trawlers mm. and that, yeah. it would be scary. Yeah. Because there's lots of little ones up the river when you throw them, getting bait, you know. Just like, they grow the big ones. So, but they are quite an amazing species. Um, so, get back to these marks, guys. Um, the ones up higher, that 153, 30, 33, they're all in about 40 to 50 metres deep, okay? Um, and then the ones down below those blocks I just talked about, um, a couple of those are just the bait reef straight up front of the seaway, because we caught Jewies there too. And you get them there right on dark, same deal. I've caught them on the Aquarius, you know, the, the, it's a wreck just on the Dead Man's Bank on the north side of Dead Man's. Um, I've caught them there when I'm, get my live bait in the, sometimes in the afternoon and morning. Sometimes you get the morning waiting on the daylight to crack and first live, we always have, and actually Liam will show a video a bit later, we did exactly that. Drop the live straight down while we're getting the live and got a jury straight away. Um, the ones down further are all in that sort of um, 40 to 45 metre mark down to about as far as um, east of about Main Beach. So, main beach up to jumping pin area. A lot of truth. He, he doesn't um, go far because no need to. Uh, no need to. No need to. But in saying that, uh, my brother Paul and I were down um, off Tweed once out at, um, we call it Deep Southern. It's in about um, 85 metres or 88 metres deep. And we were catching jewies. Um, I was quite surprised. And then, uh, and we are catching quite a few. And then another time, um, we were up in, off jumping pin in 118 metres, a pearly spot I got, and we caught two weeks there once. And then the big shock for me was I went out on a charter boat off um, one of our friends, off um, throughout through South Passage, and Morton, we went up off, out of Deep Tempest on this wreck in 142 metres, and we, all we caught was two weeks on liveys. And I said, I can't believe they're in this deep. And he goes, 
No, the next wreck's out's in 180. We get them out there too. So, so they the go boat deep. Was the boat down the bottom? Or? Yeah, the boat was on the bottom. Yeah, the boat was on the wreck as well. But we had got live bait before we went there yeah. and just dropped it down. Yeah, yeah. So um, they are. They can go deep and they can be very shallow. But generally they're shallow. Generally they're with 50 meters or inside of it. Okay. There's probably jewies in most of your spots for this next three months that you snapper fish. You just go have a live year out. The best thing about putting the live year this time of year is you get cobra as well. And you get snapper on it as well. Of course you get sharks too, but part of the parcel. Yeah. Um, but we're gonna we're gonna actually start on was meant to start on lures first. <laughs> Light fishing first. So um, we gotta um, we ourselves do a lot of like, um, like this type of fishing, ball ball rubber fishing, this type of thing. And during the day or early morning, the Jewies hound these type of things. And we've got a few customers that specialise in that sort of thing. And they get like lots and lots of jew. Um, also slow pitch jigs, um, like this type of thing, just a little slow pitch jig. Um, very, very good as well. And the action on that's very easy. It's just very slow. A couple of wines, stop, shake the rod. And then it's a couple of wines again, stop. Shake the rod, a little bit of a lift if you want. Wait, and they just jump on. It's as simple as that. Okay. It's about as easy as it is. <laughs> um, there's no real thing to it. The, the secret is just to know sort of where they're hitting it, whether it be on the bottom or 10 foot off the bottom or, or six meters off the bottom. And that's the area you get ready for the next time you're going to drop down again. So understand the depth. Two wines, three wines, four wines, whatever it may be up. Okay. Before you do that jigger, you find mm. on the sounder? Yeah, you find on the sounder. So you'll see that they come up, like like yeah. like I was saying before, they are bigger. Um, Baitfish obviously comes up as a, as a bit of a patch where they're individual around it. Yeah, you yep. on the first week, yeah mate, 100%. Yeah. So um, although in saying that, some of the blocks I've fished at, um, we couldn't find them on the, on the blocks. And a couple of times I've, I've been out there and in the same scenario, because I can't get to the block because there's three guys on there I've got out here late and, and it really annoys me but I can't get to my spot and there's like three there, three boats over there, three boats over there and I go, well, and we've just actually sounded around and found them on bait in the middle of the paddock. Yeah, right. So they come off the, off the block and they follow the bait. That's why I always say, follow, look for the bait. So you're spot on, you look for the bait yeah. and they'll be around it. Yeah, and you'll see them. Yeah. 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 So yeah, a couple of times it's been really good because the guys have been anchored up on the blocks or spot locked on it, and we've been 150, 200 metres away from them, just doing not much wind around, just doing slow drifts, and just absolutely creaming the jew fish out in the middle of the sand, and it's really good because they can't they can't do you. So you're still drifting outside, so you're not anchoring up on the spot. No, I drift a lot. Yeah, yeah I drift a lot. Uh, if it's like blowing 15 knot northerlies or southerly, or whatever, no, I'd probably put the anchor out. Yeah, because it's easier. Yeah. But if you pull the anchor up, it's not there and not biting, you might want to move to the next block. Because sometimes they're like that, they're not biting that, they're biting that one over there. So you might have to move around a bit. Yeah, yeah. so the blocks are really good because you got, there are, I don't know how many blocks are out there in the studio. I don't know, there's four marks, but there's yeah. unmarked ones in between them. Yeah, there's lots. Yeah. I think there's like 16 or something blocks there, I think. Someone could tell us would be great. Um, but yeah, that's, um, it's a great, great area to fish, so you can move around a bit. Yeah, what I'm going to try this year, it sounds stupid before it goes, you silly, but <laughs> I won't use the word he said, um, but I'm going to try, this, I'm going to try to try a real deep diver, slow and work it, work it down, because you can't drop too fast, the chewies I don't think, work it down to the depth, um, these things get down about 50 feet, and give it a crack over the blocks this year, at night, on a, on a bit of moonlight, yeah, give it a go, I'll let you know how it goes. Yeah. yeah, do a video. Um, Jason Heller, um, one of our customers, we go some of these two when we first got them last year. Um, he smashed a jewel on these. So you've all got one in your bag. Um, we catch pearl pearlies and snapper and everything on these too, but um, these are very massively big in America. Um, they use over there and everything, but they have a swinging hook, so the hook's actually not stiff rid. Does that make sense? The hook swings, so it moves with the, with the action of, of that. Bucktail. And um, yeah, he said they're really, really good. And you push those. Yeah, so just the same way as you did it, so pitch. 
wind up, sit it, jiggle it, lift it. You just got to vary it, vary action. Okay. Um, I think that's probably about it on the lures. It's better the lures too. Do you want to add to that one? No. Try and, yeah, plastics out yeah. there are really good as well. Same deal, same thing. But you're using a jig head and actually fishing the bottom, not not winding it across the top. Um, if you're using um, slow pitch jigs, about 60 to 100 grams the size to use in that area from 20 to 50 meters deep. Okay. Do you find them picky on the lure size at times? Oh, they are. Yes, they are. So even though the, there might be big slimies there, they still want to eat that sort of size. You know, I did grab a bigger one out because a couple of times we have dropped down like a longer type jig um, but again it's only about 100 grams because the action works better in that depth oh it sinks too fast it doesn't really do much it's too heavy yeah. so I'll pass these around but oh you've actually got those in your bag I think that's that one so you're looking yeah. at the oh. style is better flutter style is better more action that's why the, these things work so well because they're very underwater they're very um, a lot of movement yeah Okay, guys, so um, rigging up for the bottom, for bottom fishing, uh, for, for the jewies. Um, I've got a snelled hook rig here, just a small one. They're, I think they're six O's, like so. So if I'm using yakas that are about that size, or slimies, or whatever they are, uh, small baits, um, that's about the hook I'll be using, and that's about the length my hooks are between the two. And when I put the hooks in the fish, which I'll pass around in a moment, I don't put it down towards the back much at all. Not a very good look, it's like a whale on the fish, but anyhow. Is that the jude fish? <laughs> no, it's a bait fish. <laughs> yeah, they've got the little spikes on the side of the yakas, but um, I'll put the first hook. Um, I put it, generally, I'll either put it through here just in front of his eye, it's about where his nostrils are actually, and then out the other side. If you put it through the nostril though, it falls out sometimes. Has anyone had that problem before? And you end up pulling up by the hook that's down the back here. What so through the eye socket. Through the eye socket, socket. I think it kills him too quick. Yeah, so I prefer to put it in here and out through his nose. That stays in a fair bit, and he can still open his mouth and breathe as they do. So my hook will go, this is his mouth sort of here, a hook will go in here, I'm oh, sorry, his eyes back there, sorry, and out through, sort of through here. That's the first hook, okay? Imagine his mouth there, and his eyes there. So about through that, okay? And then the second hook, so this hook snells, that's the, that's the hook that's closest to the sinker. And as Stuart said before, I do the same, I run my sinker right on top of the hook, okay? And then... That's that hook at the top here. The sink is sitting on here. Okay. Then this hook here, um, years ago I used to stick it up the top here, but they curl up and sometimes the hook pinches into them and they get stuck and they curl up and they die. Okay. They can't wriggle too much. And also the hookup rate's not, not as good as the way I'm going to show you. So what I do is the line comes down here. The line's quite loose. It can be really loose actually. But I'll stick the hook in um, around about just past his dorsal, about here somewhere. And I'm just above, imagine that's his skeleton there. I'm just above it. And I put it in about here. And it's the hook sticking out here. And the rest is internal. And it comes out. Actually, goes the other way around, sorry. And that's internal and then it sticks out to the side here, if that makes sense. Oh, so you sort of tuck it yeah, so, under the skin and what Yeah, I'll, I'll rig it up now and I'll show you how to do it. I'll rig a few up and show you. Are they pitch, isn't it? Yeah. Do you want any more reds? Uh, yeah, if you don't mind, mate, yeah. I'll, I'll do some bigger ones. Is there any bigger bit? Oh, is that a fillet? That'll do. I'll put two a fillet as well. Maybe um, hooks, small hooks. Uh, smaller hooks and bigger hooks if you can. Right? Yeah. Uh, I'll get some black ones out yeah. there. Uh, no, just 60 pound mono is what I use. Um, like when they're on the bite, they don't really care. Uh, but if I'm using, if I was fishing a seaway, I'll get Suda Rig went up on 40 pound here. 
Um, we'll do like a little one. There's a little one in somewhere, like a herring. So imagine a little bait. And then we'll do like a medium size, like this size, like a little yakka. And then we'll do a bit bigger bait. But um, so the first hook here has got the sinker on just right here. If you're going to use this one here, just through the mouth and straight out through the top here. I'm doing it wrong. <laughs> Sorry. If it's dead, this one's actually got a tongue, has it? Has it got some, <laughs> it's got something in his mouth. Uh, anyhow, doesn't matter. That'll do. It's got a tongue, gets in the way. This is actually not a pilcher, it's a um, Indo sardine. And then this one here. Okay, so we're going to go from the top down. Does that make sense? So from here, let's go. Very different to a normal fish. Pushing it down and then sticking it out like that at the side, like so. Okay, so when they, if they do grab it head first, they're going to obviously get hooked on that one there, but if they grab it from behind and pull down, you've got it straight away, it's just hooked up. And that's how it goes. Just like that. That's as big a hook as I'd probably use on that one, actually. I'll pop a bit on there and pass it around. That hook can be a bit straighter, maybe. I'll do the bit bigger size here, a bit better. What size lead is that one, Stu? Hey. Do you want a little one? Um, at least that. It doesn't affect it. No, not at all. No. Thanks, Stu. Oh, that's quick, right? Stewie's very quick at tying knots. He is the knot guru. I give him the title. Undefeated. Okay, so this is a little, is these four O's, mate? The four or five O's. Okay, oh, that's right. So imagine that's a little herring, a little potty mullet. Okay? So same deal. Start through here. Shall I put the bottom in first? It's still semi frozen, sorry about that, guys. So, the secret is not to have that line too tight because you're going to curl it. And as soon as you curl, it's going to spin the current. They don't want to know about it, they just don't want to know about it. So, thanks, Stu. Weird smell, these things, eh? So, this is live. Was live. Ah, dead baits be the same way. Is that? Oh, except I've changed the hook up through the. Actually, I'll do that on the next one here. Yeah, yeah I'll show you how to do it. Thanks. Yep. Do the same thing. The Beautiful. Flaps yeah. So do a butterfly. Do you want me to do a butterfly for you guys? Yeah. Yep. Um, actually, butterfly I like using with a circle hook, just through the mouth. Not even the second hook in it. But I'll show you how to put a second hook in. Yeah. Uh, we don't have a stock there, do we? Yeah, yeah, in that top drawer. Top drawer. So I'll pass these over to you. Okay, Thanks. Yeah. Thanks, man. So, the so, dead bait experience is. Uh, in, the, in a butterfly at the time, see, yeah, it is. Um, but you can rig up this way. So it's true. Don't feel it like that. Hey. Is it? No. Um. Swap it. It's got to be in there somewhere. <coughs> there was one on the table that was like a piece of stuff. Like that. So folks, looking for a fillet knife or a tackle shot, but we can't find a fillet knife. <laughs> Okay. Is that right? Yeah, the one we just use for cutting the boxes open. Oh, I'll be a bit blunt, but. Okay. You're right? Yeah. Bear with us. Do you okay. Find, do you fish, because you've got multiple guys in the boat, but do you fish the two different styles at the same time? 
So the different size base. Oh, yep. Yeah. 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 Yeah, day, daytime, yes. So gentleman has asked if, we, if we're drifting daytime, on daytime I will, um, he asked to use different techniques, like one guy's are jigging and other guys are using live baits. The problem is with live baits is it's going to get in the way a little bit um, and you're com constantly, if it's a bit windy, you need to reverse back, guys. You have to, I didn't tell you that yet, but you need to reverse up so the bait's nearly vertical. Not quite vertical, but nearly vertical. So a lot of time we're drifting for Jew, because we're in 20 metres deep, 25 metres deep, um, I'm on motor scale the whole time. And as soon as my line gets out a bit, I'll say, guys, I'm going to back back a little bit, and I'll just back back a little bit and bring him back in line again. But for the guy that's jigging, and he's got a light jig, it'll go that way or it goes the wrong way. So it gets like when you're jigging out for snapper, same deal. So you're either doing really one or the other. So if we're going to uh, jig, we just jig, a wheel jig. Yeah. And Thanks, Stuart. Are you constantly handling the Got yep. live, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You're holding the rod the whole time. The the whole time. Yeah. Oh, not always. Um, I'll show that in a minute too. I think Phil's on these bad boys. Soft. Is that big something in here? Big, big sperm bank. <laughs> it's a bit softer than a yakka. <laughs> well, well, they are. Minced pilly after this is done. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Zibber day. Okay, so when you butterfly fish, you just get rid of the tail section and you fill it right up to the head, okay? Has anyone not done this? Anyone not done this before? Yeah, I yeah, yeah, give the crack. So, and take the backbone out. Some guys do leave the backbone on one side. I don't like to do that. Um, if I'm using a circle hook, I've got one right here actually, um, what I'll do sometimes is I'll just put that hook from the bottom Big thick hook, this one might be too thick for this fish. And then out through his nose. So it's just sitting there like that. And as soon as you move it or in the current or whatever, this just flaps around, okay? And when the fish grabs it, they'll set the hook themselves on a circle hook. Um, the other way technique you can do it, unfortunately the hooks we got here might be a bit big, but um, is you can same deal as before. This is a little bit big. That, uh, I'll just tie one. That's all right. I just want to show you tie one. But I'll run the first hook through the uh, the head there, and I'll put just the one hook as before through one of the one of the flaps, and the other flaps free. Okay. Isn't it amazing when you're fishing, you don't smell anything, but when you're not fishing, it's like, jeez, <laughs> <laughs> it's like a change mode. Eh? So when a customer walks in and we're working, and a guy walks in with his boat pulled out the front, it's like. Oh. <laughs> Uh, when you're fishing, it'll be all over you. It doesn't matter. It's irrelevant. Another thing you should learn to do, guys, is, is to snell a hook on to your line. Yeah. Two hooks together. Yeah. Stu, do explain what you're doing, mate. Actually, while I'll I'm, rig while I'm yeah. rigging this up, Stu will do another one, and he'll tell you how he does it. Cause... Thanks. Beautiful, mate. Thank you, sir. That's oh, sharp too, Stu. Are you going to use two, two pieces of lead? No, no, so no. one piece. The only way, like I snell a little bit differently, but yeah. I tie it on thick stuff so you can maybe see. Um, you need to cut the length of your leader first. So it's a bit of a pain, but it's all right. Two hooks, I just tie the bottom hook off just with a blood knot or a uni knot or something like that. And on the other one, which is the one that we're going to snell, we go through the eye of the hook, but up from underneath. <coughs> so go through. It's good tying it this way because you can determine your length. So wherever your hook sits is where it's going to where it's going to be. 
So just say we want to tie it, say that long, just for a standard size yakka or something like that. Then I'm going to hold the leader alongside the back side of the hook. And now when the hooks are made, there's obviously going to be a finish point where the wires get bent around and joins back on. So I'm going to get the leader end and I'm going to wind backwards and I'm going to wind it over the smooth side first. <laughs> Sorry, Stuart. We just dropped our boat, folks. <laughs> Is it still one piece? That's cool. Anyway. <laughs> After I wind it backwards, <laughs> smooth Thanks. side first, wind it backwards about 10 times, roughly. So I'm winding down the hook. Yeah. Down. And then back through the back end of the hook. And that's it. Yeah. It's like, it's like lassoed it. Yeah. That's true. Did you want any others done? Or? Uh, no. uh, I forgot one for you. Um, I just need a small one for the squid, mate. Right. Small, small? Uh, about small. five. Uh, that, uh, one size down, maybe? Five, oh, no. Yeah. It's still frozen. So, guys, I've got a squid here. So, um, for those of you who are land based, uh, um, Squid's quite good bait, okay? And it's also good bait in the surf and also good bait uh, off the rocks as well. And it's really good bait. Like that sort of squid there is really good bait for jacks as well, guys, in the river. 100%. California squid's the best to get. So the ones in the box, they're dear, but they're it takes a long time to use a box up. And they're really, really good baits, okay? So I'm going to go chase jacks. That's the go-to bait. Probably better than live bait even. Okay? Yep. yep. And how would you fish it? Uh, same way I'm going to do now. <laughs> yeah. Let's do this good thing there. Put my glasses, my stinky glasses back on. Thank you, sir. So, um, okay, if I'm going to do the live bait like we talked about before, imagine this is a live, it doesn't look very live, but I imagine it is. I'm just got a single circle, imagine it's a circle hook. It's just in this part here. Uh, don't go right through the, uh, actually, wrong way around, sorry. Yeah. Don't go right through the um, body, I just go through to the centre part, to the hollow part, and pop it back out. That part is quite hard in there, okay? Quite hard. But for this, that's what it is. And it's not out that side at all. It's only on that one side. But imagine now it's going to be used as a bait. I'm going to reverse the hooks around. So. Sometimes I'll put it through the, the head, but what I'll do there is I go through the body on the top right dead set centre, about here, and I'll poke it out, and then I'll pull it through and I'll just dig that into the head. Is that do No, this is dead. This is for, this is for the Jewies. Uh, for the Jewies or Jacks, doesn't matter. Uh, it's, it is exposed in there, believe it or not. Yeah, it's there. This is not a very good squeeze, it's a bit soft now. And then just a top hook in the top part there. So that's how the bait presents. And, um, and the hookup rate's really good too. Hooks, hooks there, hooks there, and that works really well. But you've got to go through the top part of that hood at the bottom end before you go through the head. Don't just stick it into the head, because it, 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 dis, it dis comes uh, dislodged. And you've got like one hook there, one hook over there sort of thing, it's real weird. Ah oh, no, for Jewies, for Jewies, for Jacks. I'm using frozen California squid. Really good bait. Like I mean, if I had choice between some live diver whiting and a few couple of mullet, or a box of squid, I'd probably take squid. I'm serious. <laughs> the brim annoyed the crap out of me, but there's a good circle. If I'm only using a live squid, I don't use, otherwise use the J, the same hooks there. So if I'm using a live squid, um, it'll just be the one through the hood. Right, I've got the first two before. If you get live squid, you use them out offshore as well. Um, yeah, that's where they're really good. Yeah, but as I said, it's hard to put a hook in a nice live squid. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Okay, last thing to fill it. A fillet of, say, Taylor or something like that, and Sue's got some big hooks here. So we've got a mullet fillet here. Probably second best option to Taylor. Taylor's number one, of course. 
So those of you down the back is next to the bait, it's probably you, Dean. Sorry about the smell, mate. You should be used to it, mate. <laughs> so, so this is our fillet of that we salted. This is obviously not salted, but imagine it's salted. Um, so people ask, do you put it through this part or this part first? That's up to you guys, okay? Um, the thing is, when you when you do put it through, uh, like I'd prefer to put it through the flesh side because I believe it's going to eat the flesh side more than the skin side. I would I'd rather eat this topping than the crust, so to speak. Um, but the secret is just making it that it's going to sit nicely in the water. So if if I put it like that and try to get the hook right down the bottom here and it's stretched out, it may like if it wants to bend or whatever, it's going to get it's going to bend it's going to be like not straight so I'd sacrifice and come back up here a bit further and I put it through the same way as I do the livey so put it through and stick the hook out to the side like so it's just a really good technique for any bait fishing when you're using like a, a flesh bait and then the top one just through the top of you as before straight through the tail part is like the, it's like the squid it's the most hardest part of the body of their of their body and that's the rig, like so. Okay. Yeah, one either side, that's right. Yeah, one's one way, one's the other way. Exactly right, yeah. And the other thing too, guys, um, I'm gonna, this year we didn't have these last year, but as I said before, I know that the Dewey's like, as I said, like the Octo Jigs, they like this fluttering type stuff. Um, this is only a small sex, so I had that one out of the packet, but. They do like 11 O's, big sizes. I'm going to try to give those a go on the fillets this year. So I reckon they might make the difference. Give it a go. Three wood, one oh, no, it still goes through the flesh, all right. I don't, it won't be that, that much difference. And the hook rig length is about, it's, it's a tiny bit less, not much different. So it's quite long. I'd be using nine O's or 11 O's. As I said, Julie's got really big mouths. So don't be shy on um, thinking I've got to hide this or whatever. They'll just scoff it. I don't care. Even a little Dewey that's like um, 80 centimetres is probably got a mouth you know, that size or about that size. It's quite big. Yeah. Okay, any questions on that at all, guys? Is there any questions at all that we haven't covered that you might want to know? I've got one on that. Yes, please. Sorry, oh, sorry. I'm always hearing a lot. Yes, good, mate. So, do you put two hooks in a herring? Two hooks in a herring. Exactly right, mate. Yeah. And they'll scoff it, and it uh, doesn't matter if you put one hook in a herring or two hook, it dies pretty well first drop yeah. or gets eaten. Yeah. So, better chance. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Give it a go, mate. But keep it about four rows. They're actually a little bit big, maybe. That's a five. Maybe you can go down to four. Right. Yeah. And your leader should be up on about 40 pounds on herring. Because the, the leader gets too heavy and it's too hard to lift it and swim, and they'll die even quicker. So, you want less resistance on the leader, but you try and go as heavy as you can, they don't shave you off or something. So you may go down to 30 fluorocarbon or 40 mono. Okay. Yeah, under that it's a bit, I don't know, what's the lowest you use, Stu? 16. <laughs> Stu uses eight pound. I only use one hook. He so uses eight pound for flat air and loses lots. Yeah. <laughs> catch, yeah. catch a lot more. You hook up a lot more, that's true. That's right. Yeah, no, no, that's it. Uh, look, I just use mono. I find fluorocarbon gets a bit stiff in that heavy, I'm talking about the heavy size now. It gets a bit stiff. Um, no, I use fluoro up to 30. For, That's it. Yeah. For the lure fishing though, if I'm casting off the rocks off the beach, um, I may use 50 pound fluorocarbon, which is like 80 mono in abrasion resistance, yeah. but thinner. Yeah. And you mentioned before that you're only really using lures in the day. Correct. No, but I'm going to give that one a shot, but no. no. I think that guys do use off the rocks down south. They may use them with the rocks, but up here it just doesn't work. No. Uh, I've tried jigging, no, no luck. Not yet. Not yet. I won't give up on it yet. I'll give it another crack. <laughs> Not yet. Sorry, guys. The um, gentleman down the back had another. Uh, sorry. Uh, yeah. Yes. Are yes. You attaching them to your main line with an that's a really good. That's a really good question. No one's asked that question yet. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. So, guys. 
Yeah, sorry guys, the gentleman asked how do we join those, those leaders to, to our braid. Um, so if I'm using a mono line on my main line and mono on my leader, I definitely use a swivel because it just doesn't work very good and it's chunky. Um, if I'm using braid though, um, FG or Albright, anything like that's fine. Um, so and try and eliminate the swivel. Mind, just in general, if you're just running mono, yes. you're just doing that as you do it, as you're rigging the other way. Yeah, if you're running mono on your main line and mono leader, uh, I'd use a swivel. Yep. Yeah, but keep it, you, only need, you don't need a long lead. If you're running, if you're fishing for dewy south of the beach, I'd be running probably 25 to 30 pound mono if I was using mono. I'd be using braid though, but if I was using mono. Um, and yeah, you just only need a metre, a metre of leaders enough. You can grab 25 pound and pull on it. Pretty good to grab a fish, you know. Yeah. It's strong enough. 20 will, will probably break or cut your hand a bit. 15s will break. Right. Yeah. So you wouldn't use a swivel on braid? No, never. No, because I run my sinker. It's My sinker runs, um, like sometimes the bait, especially bigger slimies than that, the slimies are very active. They will pull the line, the sinker, they, they try and swim off, especially if you've got a big, something really big up their date. So they'll pull the, um, the, the FG knob, whatever, up to the swivel, and sometimes that gets caught up, but they can't go any further because it's that length of line, the leader. The leader's always about a metre, mm -hmm. 1.2 maybe, that's the max. So keep it not too long, mate. Yeah. How do you stop your sinker then going over your brain? <laughs> It, it can get pulled up there, it'll just hopefully slide back down. As soon as you get the fish on, it'll go back down. So when you're fighting the dewy guys, um, we haven't talked about when you get the dewy on. So my go, boom, 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 bang, go hook him. And then if you're fishing the rock wall, the guys down the back, you're fishing the rock wall, my suggestion would be get him to the surface as quick as you can to get him over that ledge. So he's going to pull hard, but know the limit of your gear, the limit of your strength of your line that you're using a braid and give it every bit you can to get him over that ledge. Then then he's yours. And do you have a habit of um, if you pull them in fast and not like it's not very sporting, but most Jewies are gonna take over and eat them, right? So it doesn't matter. <laughs> so um, they they give in they don't give in but they they bloat. Even from just twenty feet down they bloat and they'll float up belly up when they, once they're tired. Um, so if you can turning and rip him off the, from the deep to the shallow quick, they'll bloat and then they seem to lose their, their go and they won't get you on that ledge. It's really hard to get on that ledge. When you're in a boat and you're fishing and you're fishing say 25 metres deep and you get the boom, boom, bang and you hook it up, it's going to be quite a tough. So he's going to try and get you in that, um, in that rock or a uh, ledge or whatever it might be or in, in all the artificial reef. Um, the same deal, you just got to try and get him out of that area. And once you get him halfway up, you might have a shark to battle with. That's about the, about the worst of it. Okay? Sharks love eating dew. Especially in the seaway. Okay? And one thing I, I can highly suggest, especially in the seaway, um, and this is any fishing too, guys, if you go to do a wrap, don't do a wrap right down near its head. Because a lot of time, in my time, I've had a lot of sharks nearly bite my hand off because they bitten the fish right next to the boat, right there, and my hand's like that far away from the shark. So my suggestion is to grab a bit higher and lift it up into the boat if you don't gaff it. A little too I'm talking about. Anything over about nine, yeah, anything, anything over 900 or, or that, I'd gaff. I'd try and, get, and as I said, they give you a good gaff shot because they come up on the surface, they sort of just lie there for a minute. They'll, go, they'll kick back off again, but in that point you need to gaff it straight away. And don't use too big a gaff. Don't use a bent gaff. <laughs> nice, Joey. <Julie. laughs> not a very good gaffer at the best time, so I need all the help I can get. But yeah. yeah. As you get more and more bigger fish, so we we'll get better at it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, is there anything else you'd like to know at all, guys? Everyone sort of help, helped you out a little bit, hopefully? Yes, mate. I've seen uh, many of your fish uh, being caught by using a uh, worm. Yeah, so beach worms is, an, is a not popular up here so much, but down south, yes. And um, what they do is they use a very long shank, like a 6.0 long shank hook, or a 7.0 long shank hook. Um, and you catch your beach worms, you fish it just like you do normal fishing, actually. Leader maybe 30 pounds or 40 pounds, 
about maybe 700 to 800 long. Swivel, ball sinker, same deal. Um, but you need to pull the worm, thread the worm on the hook and keep pulling up the line, pulling up the line. The hardest part is keeping it up the line because it squashes back down, right? So you'll need to use some bait mate, which is like a... Yeah, yeah. yeah the stuff, yep. Yeah. And you sort of like don't choke it, but you come down about um, maybe an inch below the head where these little bristles are, come down maybe another 20 or 30 mil down. So that part still moves, but you've got to strangle on <laughs> below that section, tight onto the line. Yeah, I asked an older guy many years ago, I said, how do you hold the worm up? And that's what he told me exactly that. Bait mate wrapped around really tight, pull it off, and it sort of pulls it tight onto the line. But you've got to leave the head unmoving. Okay. Yeah. And okay. another thing that, um, I don't know why, but I have the feeling that there's not many Jewfish in the Gold Coast. There is more, as you said, in Bali now or Yemen. 100%. There is in many in um, uh, Afternoza, in uh, Rainbow Beach. Yeah. Okay, so, so <coughs> Rainbow Beach is not too bad a spot, and Fraser Island's very good too. I've caught lots at Fraser. Um, why they're not here? Yeah. They're, oh, they're, I think they have too much. We're in like a bay here. In a bit of a bay, and not many places along the, our coastline have the bay that we have between North Stratty and uh, and Tweed. Yeah. So there's lots of little reefs in close protected, with lots of bait, and they just seem to hang out that way a fair bit, uh, okay. all around the seaway wall. Um, down south, uh, they, they catch a lot of the beaches, you know. And as I said, that southwest rocks is our best beach fishing for jewels ever, it's off the northern side there, but I think it's a national park. That was like 15 years ago. And, uh, this is a bit off topic, but is this the same reason why uh, in uh, Nusa it's easier to catch your snapper from the beach, from the rocks? Um, they, have, they have a bit of more deeper water naturally dropping off. Mm -hmm. We don't have that here. The only place you can do, get it here is like maybe down at Cavarita. They get tuna and the odd snapper off the, off the headland down there because it sort of drops off about 30 feet or 40 feet straight away. Otherwise their beaches are very gradual. So, no, we don't have it, but we have a nice bay. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's unfortunately we've got to go that way or that way, but I'll go south for Jew. Okay. 100%. Yeah. Right. Yep. And uh, as I said, probably if you, have you been down to Aluka or Yambi yet? Uh, yeah, yeah. So, and did you catch Jew down there at all or hook any? Uh, no, I got a tuna, but uh, sharks, but I never got a Jew. And did you fish night time at all, as well? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, okay. And if, <coughs> yeah, so when you're fishing down there, like, like when we fish the sea where we're fishing the end of the wall a lot, of, of, the, of the south wall, uh, north wall, out of the boat or off the shore. So I used to go fish up the rocks and fish up the rocks there. Go my boat across, strati, walk up there, fish up the rocks, that's what I want to do. Um, but on Iluka, sometimes they come in near the middle wall and where the wall comes around, the north wall comes around in and the, north, and the middle wall starts around there. They school up the bait inside the wall, and you actually fish not on the seaside. You fish on the uh, the riverside. Yeah, the riverside. Okay. Yeah. So have a look at that nighttime, mate. See you go. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Cool. Go. Go get them, guys. So this weekend's weather, real quick. We've got one minute. Ah, uh, this weekend's weather. Um, Saturday. If any of you guys are planning to go ashore Saturday or chase jewies or whatever. Um, my suggestion would be to wait till the tide started coming in. Um, has anyone been down to have a look at the sea the last couple of days? Yes. It's huge, right? Yeah. And I spoke to a guy this afternoon who was down, down there on half the running tide and still breaking across the sea waves. So the swell is meant to abate. Um, I think it goes from like two, two and a half Saturday to about two on Sunday, then Monday is like 1.2, then Tuesday is like 0.8 or 0.9. So, if, uh, I said this too, we, we're going to try and get out to chase Jewies on Tuesday night. So, it'll be high tide about 6.30, so we'll go out at 4 and, um, and be back by sort of 7 when the tides are starting to turn. So, yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> oh, it's all right. I'll be up that area. <laughs> yeah, please don't be in my spot, please. <laughs> um, but... Um, I, I just would be a bit worried about getting night time for a couple, few days to probably Monday or Tuesday. Okay? Next week, sort of off and on, not too bad. Tuesday looks really good. 
Yeah. It changes so quick all the time, guys. Right? This, what you look the weather, you plan it all, and then you go to check the weather the next day, the day before you're going to go out, and it's like, holy, this has gone 25 knots. It's supposed to be 10, you know. And well, we give a forecast based on all everything we look at, and then you go to go out, and um, we go to look at it one more time again. It's changed, and, and we think to you guys, we tell you the date. We like today, we did the fishing reports. Is it going out tonight, Jack? Uh, well, yesterday it went out, did it? Last night, fish report. I oh, did it? Okay. No, it's today. No, it's today. Yeah, it's today. Yeah. today. That's, that's the one we did today. Home, yeah. <laughs> 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 anyway, it's gone tonight. Has it gone tonight? Yeah? The fish report that Sue and I did today. Yeah, I'm yeah. yeah, okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, we're so we, we worked so long. <laughs> yeah. um, but um, in that one, we sort of went through all the weather forecasts and tried to work it out to give you guys the best options but sometimes even we get it wrong based upon the information we get. Yeah. So sorry about that, if that happens. It's the way it is. Yeah. Okay. Okay, <coughs> prizes. We've got about, um, I, think, uh, I think it's around 1,100 bucks worth of gear tonight. And we've got seven prizes. First one's about 400, 450 bucks of gear in here. And um, we're going to let Stewie draw. Now we all know how this works. Stewie always draws in close, so I draw at the back. <laughs> oh, 33. My gosh. <laughs> well done, mate. It's always good to see a newcomer get one. <laughs> Thanks very much, mate. Thanks, though. Cheers, mate. Thank you. Next to my wife's brother, just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, second one. Second one's about, I think, around 250 bucks, roughly speaking. Thanks, Stu. I'll try and do a reverse for you guys, okay? <laughs> oh, middle. 17. Well done, mate. Oh, thank you, Stuart. Smelly up here, mate. It stinks. It's good on you. Good to see you too, mate. Thank you. Welcome, mate. Thank you. Okay, third prize. I think still around 150 or 200 bucks. Graham, got to do the honours, mate. Thank you, mate. Guys, thanks for coming along too. And um, we got a long weekend, so hopefully we get get a chance to get out there. 34. Another one down the back. 34. Is that you, mate? It is. <laughs> but I was keeping it in the family, though. <laughs> well done, matey. Thank you, mate. Cheers, mate. Thank you, Graham. Okay, Miss Psycho, your turn. My lovely wife does a lot of work behind the scenes. Thank you, mate. She does all the editing of Stuart's My Argument. She's put up all that crap to make it, to make it nice for you guys because we, um, we're always giving each other heaps of crap. Oh, this is amazing. 16. Oh, <laughs> now, this is not rigged, guys, okay? Well done, mate. Yeah, good on you. Yeah, it is to the right, that's right. Yeah. Okay, Stewie, come on, mate. I think the next one's still around 100 bucks or something like that. Almost well, 60 bucks, I don't know. 100 bucks, maybe, I don't know. 32. Oh, get out of it! <laughs> Cousin. <laughs> well done, buddy. There you go, mate. Good on you. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to shake these up. This is for the second hand fight. Oh, no, let's go find out something else. 24. Well done, matey. <laughs> Unfortunately, getting down to the dress, but <laughs> thanks, Stuart. Cheers, mate. Well done, buddy. Thank thanks, mate. Cheers, mate. Okay, last one. Okay. Oh, actually, we can. <laughs> We've got another bag. Thanks. Oh well, well done. Good on you. Thanks, mate. Cheers, mate. Uh, you sure? 
Yeah. Okay, you're a good man. You get a field mic for that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys, the last thing. I'm giving away the bait. <laughs> Who wants the bait? <laughs> <laughs> They come with the rigs. <laughs> Someone's going to take this home in their car. <laughs> and if you catch fish on there, remember, we eat fish at our house. Okay, Stewie, you're the bait drawer. <laughs> Gee, thanks. <laughs> Comes with the guts too. <laughs> the backbone. Twelve. Twelve. Number twelve. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want it, mate? You might as well take it. <laughs> you don't want it? <laughs> oh, okay. I'll, I'll throw in a jig with it. <laughs> yeah, I'll keep it out, though. <laughs> good on you, mate. Tell it. Thank you. Okay, good stuff. Okay, guys, um, thanks for coming along. I hope you learn a bit and um, get there and catch a